Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. First off, before I get into the video, I just want to thank you guys because last after last week's video I passed the 2000 subscriber mark which is something I wouldn't be able to do without you. So thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it and uh, I'm glad to hear all your comments and feedback right that these videos are helping you because that's been my goal and it just makes me really happy to hear that. And so today we're gonna have a rapid fire video for all the different techniques uh, that you can use to rewrite a query to improve performance. This topic is very near and dear to my heart because for a long time uh, when I started writing SQL queries, I often ran into this situation of needing to rewrite a query for performance. I couldn't always do things like add indexes or change server settings because I would have a lot of restrictions around the database that would prevent me from doing that. Things like vendor databases where you can't touch anything or uh, size restrictions, right? Like maybe there's just not enough disk space and anyway. I couldn't get more disk space allocated in a timely manner, right, to be able to add more indexes or things like that. And so I learned a lot of these techniques over time from conference presentations to blog blog posts to just talking to people about how they rewrite their queries and uh, while I feel pretty comfortable using all of these now, when I was starting out I really wish there was a resource that kind of listed all of these or went over all these different topics to just gen help me generate ideas of how I can refactor a query for better performance. And so with today's video, I'm going to try to do that. We're going to take a quick look at the videos, the past four videos in this series, um, as well as discuss eight other other techniques you can use for refactoring a query in order to improve performance. So in the first video of this series we looked at window functions compared to writing queries using group by statements. I love window functions but sometimes their performance can be a little lacking because of their use of tempdb and the fact that a lot of times they will block your query execution right preventing from the execution from continuing on until one specific part uh, has completed so the remedy in that case is just to rewrite your window functions using the good old-fashioned group by and you sub queries to get the same result that you would with the window function in the second video, we looked at correlated subqueries versus derived table queries. Restructuring your query logic from the former to the latter can really improve performance in a lot of situations because correlated subqueries will often have to re-execute query logic over and over again. It basically becomes kind of like a cursor, right? Versus using a derived table query will act more like a set-based query operation which will improve performance. Another technique we looked at was rewriting our queries with ORs or INS uh, to use union alls instead. In cases where our data is not evenly distributed or in cases where we don't have covering indexes for our data, switching from an IN to a union all could actually improve query performance because it'll force SQL Server to kind of look at each different value that we're filtering on on its own and decide what's the best way to filter out that data from our table. Finally, I had a video on using temporary staging tables, right? Taking a long query or a query that is using a lot of tempdb and just inserting a temporary table into the flow of that query to improve performance. Not only can you reuse more of your query data that way, uh, but you can give SQL Server better information about your data so that in, in return, right, the query optimizer is able to create better execution plans for you, which will perform faster. And while I created videos for those four techniques in particular, because those are the ones that I find myself using the most often, there's obviously countless other techniques that you can use to rewrite your own SQL queries. If you check out the blog post in the description below, uh, you'll find that I've linked to a lot of uh, other resources around the web that discuss these techniques. So if you want to learn more, be sure to check those out. But for now, let's talk about these eight remaining techniques. So one technique you can use is forcing the join order of tables. Normally SQL Server decides what order it wants to filter and join your data, but in certain situations where it's maybe lacking good information about the correct join order or what the correct join order should be, you can force a join order by using a blocking operator like a top. 
Another technique you can use is to convert your UDF functions just to be directly in line as part of your SQL query. In certain situations, this will actually be fixed automatically as part of SQL Server 2019, but until then, it's a good practice to, if you can you know, take your logic out of a function and put it back into your query, SQL Server is gonna generate much better estimates, it's gonna be able to use parallel plans, and overall, it could improve your query performance dramatically. On the contrary though, sometimes you may not want your SQL Server to parallelize your queries and in those cases it may make sense to actually put your query logic into a function because that'll force a serial plan. Putting your logic into a scalar function, right, if you're doing it for the right reasons, could actually generate a plan which will be more efficient, especially in those cases where parallelism, the overhead of parallelism, or maybe really skewed data that you can't change, right, would benefit from a serial plan. So next up is using not exists instead of not in. Um, generally, they'll perform about the same, but under certain situations, under certain conditions, not exists will perform better. So it's always worth trying to use not exists, um, especially if your query is using not in to see if you can get performance improvement there. Another thing you could try to do is to add table compression or index compression. Generally, people think of data compression as a storage saving measure, right? Because you're compressing your data, so it's taking up less space on disk. But in certain workloads, compressing your data could actually improve performance. While there is a CPU overhead to decompressing your data in SQL Server, um, in certain situations, right, because the data is compressed, it's taking up fewer pages um, of data in memory in the buffer pool, you can actually see better performance if your data is compressed. Materialized views are another option. I find these particularly useful in vendor database environments where you can't touch the original tables, but if you can create a view and if you can index that view, uh, you could get a lot of the same performance benefits of if you were just to index those ta original tables in the first place. So that's definitely one that I use a little bit more frequently than these others. Another option you have available is to change the cardinality estimator for your query. The new cardinality estimator that was introduced in SQL Server 2014 uh, works really well for a lot of different queries because the assumptions of uh, the cardinality estimator of, of how it makes assumptions about the data right, have changed, but in certain situations, the performance is actually worse. So one quick and easy way to just see if your query performs differently is just to switch back to the old cardinality estimator by using uh, an option to force that legacy cardinality estimator. And finally, the last tip to improve your query performance through refactoring of the data alone is to just create a copy of the data. Sometimes the amount of rewriting uh, you would have to do to get a query to perform better, right, just it, it's too much or you can't possibly rewrite it to make it perform better without also adding indexes and things. And so it just makes sense to just make a copy of that data somewhere else. And then you have the freedom, right, to create indexes and change settings and have more control over how your queries are executing. So don't ever forget, right, that creating a copy of the data for a different specific purpose for your query, right, is a valid option. And by no means is this list of query rewriting techniques exhaustive, right? There's numerous amounts of ways you can rewrite a query to improve performance. The key thing to remember is that the SQL Server Query Optimizer, right, is making plans based on the best data that it has available. And sometimes either the data that it has available or its assumptions, right, go all out of whack and you get these bad execution plans. In those cases, if you can't fix the root cause of the problem by modifying indexes or adding statistics and things like that, uh, you have to just think about, okay, how can I get the query optimizer to do something else so it doesn't fall into this trap because of the uh, you know insufficient data or the skewed data. And so that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this list of query refactoring techniques beneficial, be sure to share this video with your friends or your coworkers, right? Whoever else can benefit from this, right? You'll be their hero, I promise. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks.